So today I just wanted to talk about making use of multiple internet connections. Um, this is something which may be of use if you're struggling with slow internet or you're a business and you want to have a backup internet connection if your main connection goes down, for example. Um, it can also be used to, for something called load balancing. If you had a really high number of users, you could make use of multiple internet connections to share the load. So I'm going to go through the different scenarios and the benefits of each and how it works and things. And just to give you some food for thought, really, and hopefully give you some options going forward as to what you might want to do with your own connections. So starting at the beginning, most um, internet connections, most um, most commonly, you have a single broadband connection, single fiber connection, most commonly these days, running into a router. And that internet connection is then delivered to your business or to your home or whatever it may be. And if that internet connection goes down, obviously you can't get online and perhaps potentially your business suffers in some way if you're heavily reliant on the internet connection. And let's face it, what business isn't reliant on the internet in some way in this day and age? So it can be a pain. Overall, internet connections are more and more reliable. And they definitely are a lot more reliable than they used to be, but it still doesn't stop the odd outage from time to time. We see it with, with our customers where, um, certain internet service providers um, may just inadvertently pull the plug on them in some way uh, or they've got an engineer down the road working on the exchange who's accidentally disconnected him. You do see these sort of things go on. So having a secondary or even third connection, which we'll come to, might be a good idea. So the basic principles which I personally believe in for this are if you've got your primary internet connection, and let's say for argument's sake, that's with BT broadband, then it's a fiber connection. Then what I highly recommend you do, if you're looking at using a secondary internet connection, either for backup or to load balance, which I'll go through shortly, to use a completely and utterly different provider. The reason being, you often see it where, let's say for argument's sake here, that BT are suffering an outage, but another broadband provider, let's say Virgin or um, KCOM, they're absolutely fine. So if your secondary connection is with a completely different provider, that is a good thing because there is much less chance of you suffering from any outage because if the primary connection's gone down, there's a good chance the secondary one is absolutely fine and you'll fail over to that and away you go. Um, the thing to add into the mix here as well these days is the use of 3G, 4G and now 5G technology as well. So this doesn't your backup connection doesn't necessarily need to be a fixed line or, or a fiber connection delivered in the traditional ways through phone lines and copper, etc. You can get a 3G or 4G or 5G dongle, a USB dongle with a SIM card in it, which has an internet connection, provided there's good signal, of course. That can also be connected to a router and that could be the backup. So if the primary physical line has gone down, you can use the kind of almost like a mobile phone signal based internet connection as your backup and that would work well as well. So, yes, yeah, scenarios where you may want to consider making use of multiple internet connections. There is the most obvious one is having one as a backup, which I've just been talking about. Having one as a primary and one as a secondary connection should the primary go down. Where you may also want it, though, if your internet connection isn't very good, let's say for argument's sake, it's four meg. And that's the best you can get because you're out in a rural location. That is the best possible connection you can get. What you could consider doing if that is just too slow or you have too many people trying to share that connection, you could consider getting a secondary connection put in, another four meg connection, and then you do something called load balancing where in effect you've kind of got eight meg available to you shared between the two connections. So you might have five people on the one connection and five people on the other connection and therefore their experience of the internet is that much quicker because it's being shared out between these multiple connections. You might also have it where 
again, you, there's nothing to stop you having a fixed line, let's say the 4 meg, and there is half decent 3G or 4G connectivity in your area and using a USB dongle as um, to help um, spread the load as well. If you can get a good data package, of course, ideally unlimited for a reasonable cost. OK, so that's another scenario where you might want to spread the load a bit, have multiple connections because your primary connection isn't that good. So things to think about with either of these scenarios, the, the, the backup scenario or the load balancing shared connection scenario is the cost here, because you in essence, you are going to go from paying from one line and one broadband connection to potentially either paying for a secondary line and a secondary connection. Um, and if it's a backup line, it may hardly ever be used. So bear that in mind. But it still makes sense for a lot of businesses to have that peace of mind. But also with the 3G and 4G and 5G options, again, you'll need to have purchase the USB dongle and have some kind of data package, which may cost you anything between 20 and 40 pounds a month, um, which might be sat idle. But you also might be making good use of it, in which case it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? So there is that cost factor involved here to pay for that secondary connection, no matter what you do, if you're using it as a backup or sharing the, the bandwidth, sharing the load. Um, there is that obvious cost factor there. So I also just thought it might be helpful for you to visually see kind of how this works. So what I've got here is a router, which we commonly use. This is a Draytech router, and we absolutely love these. We use lots and lots of these. So what you will need for, for this type of solution is a router like this one or similar that has the connections on. So I'll do a little bit of a close up. So what you've got here across the front is all the ports and whatnot. The bits we're interested in is this router can cope with multiple connections because it has, first and foremost, it has these two connections here. It has one for an ADSL, which is like standard broadband, but also we'll do fiber on something called VDSL here. And then in this port can be configured to talk to a secondary connection. Now, in a lot of scenarios, you will need some another device to plug into here because this is a is what's called an Ethernet port. And you will need like some kind of modem as well as this router to connect into that. Um, but they're they're not expensive. And you can often, if you ask your ISP nicely, you might even get one for free. So you would have the two connections physically connected into this one router, and either one as the primary and one as backup, or these two just sharing the load and spreading the load between all the users. The USB ports over here. These are what can be used to plug in a USB 3G, 4G, 5G dongle. And as again, you could, in theory, have these three sharing the load, or you might literally have it where this is my primary connection, this is my backup connection, but also if both of these go down because these are physical lines into a building, I could have my USB 3G, 4G, 5G dongle connected into here as a third backup. Um, that might seem like overkill, but to a lot of businesses, that actually makes sense because they just never want to be offline. And while some of the solutions may be slower than others, it's still better to have a connection than no connection. So hopefully that gives you just a visual idea of what's going on here. We can literally plug in multiple internet connections into one physical box, and then we can do lots of clever stuff in here, either to share the load out or act as primary and backup and secondary backup if needed so um it works really well we see it work well we see it work well in in the two scenarios of outline we've seen it working well where they simply want a backup line a backup connection that's fine but we've seen it work well where the customer doesn't have very good internet speeds and they've combined the two lines to low balance i think purely off the top of my head this particular customer it's standard adsl ir they literally can't get fiber and it's about 15 meg. So they've used two connections at 15 meg to kind of give them 30 meg shared between all their users, which made a hell of a difference. It was a re actually a really good solution because it just took took the pain out of the one connection and speeded everything up for, for, for everybody overall. Um, it's still not great because there's an awful lot quicker internet connections out there, but where they are, they physically can't get better than that. So they're making best use of what's available to them by having the two connections. And it works really, really well. It's relatively easy to set up. Um, and once it's set up, it, it just kind of works. You don't need to tweak it or anything unless you purposely want to, of course. Um, so yeah, just food for thought that you can get multiple internet connections 
to back up your business or to spread out the load to speed things up for people relatively easily, relatively cheaply. Um, there's lots of good solutions to be had out there and using these type of routers are all part of that and these are really, really good. Okay, so I think that's it for today. If this video has given you food for four or has been helpful in any way, shape or form, please do smash the hell out the like button for me. It really helps with our channel, really helps to spread the word about our video, so please do that. Likewise, please comment on this video. I do try to actually directly comment back to people and get involved in a discussion as much as I can and give help to people as much as I can. So please do comment and I will try my best to get back to you. And likewise, below this video is all the links to connect with me on Instagram and on Twitter and on LinkedIn. Okay, so I think that's it for today. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.